Yeah, so first of all, I wanted to point point towards kind of Acorn release, um, which is the, a repository that's just out there on GitHub. It's the only place, so we don't have a website right now for, for Acorn. Um, there's a couple of spots where I think you can get linked to it, for example, through Harris Brown Enterprises, probably our projects. Um, yeah, this would take you, this would take you there through um, through HB, and you can also get to it through the uh, through this fellow through this fellow website. Um, and uh, so those bring you here, and then we we roll releases, and the releases are so far for uh, Mac and Linux, and. Um, what was really exciting was when Sim2H kind of enabled us to have that networking breakthrough because uh, we actually could play multiplayer, um, you know, multiplayer Acorn and uh, cross platform from Linux to, to Mac. And when we hit that point with it, it was really exciting. So um, we did some really kind of interesting stuff as well to, to provide uh, security and privacy in, uh, in a certain feature that I'm going to show you too. So um, yeah, so anyways, just before this, I wanted to start from a fresh slate. So I, I just cleared my local uh, version of it and downloaded this one. And when you download it, then it's just an unzip and um, I'm going to put it, uh, yeah, and then you can th put it into your, your applications folder. Let's do that. Let's put it into applications. And uh, and yeah, so this is an Electron app. Um, this is, it, 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 it runs, it basically starts Hologene up itself in the background in order to run. And meanwhile, the front end and the whole package is just kind of like a, uh, it, it builds like a native app and has a, a logo and runs locally off your machine. And um, we tried to really round out the experience. So it has everything from kind of the splash screens uh, at the start of like launching it, gives you a vision of what, what does this do? Um, you just hop through the, um, the panels. And here we talk a little bit about um, make collaboration happen peer to peer. So help your distributed team to stay on track of changes and updates, communicate easily, avoid double work, and help each other accomplish your goals. Acorn is even built on peer to peer technology called Holochain. And uh, yeah, kind of the idea of collective intelligence. So sign me up. I can leave this blank. And um, it's been really interesting playing with um, what, what are the important design patterns to kind of utilize to get people familiar with, with what is a system look like that runs on Holochain uh, or even, you know, and, and that anything, a lot of these protocols run with, with, with private key, public key, cryptography, and those kinds of things. A lot of people don't know what, what that stuff is. Um, but just starting to introduce it gently here, like you, can't, you don't know what you can do with your public key or maybe what that means necessarily, but showing you that this is from the start that your concept of your identity on this platform is, is unique and, um, and uh, yeah, kind of exposing that to the user in, in, in a way from the beginning is, um, some really conscious choices that we made too. So um, before you play with the tree, uh, well, up until recently, it was actually just a single global tree. And then of course we figured we need to, um, we need to isolate uh, one tree from another tree and give people the ability to work specifically on projects. and not just projects, but they should be able to share them. So, um, or to have like a private project that's shared between people. And um, that was a really interesting set of questions to explore. How are we gonna do that with Holochain? And if you're interested, David, can we can talk about that or not? 
Yeah, um, sure. Um, well, it, it, yeah, it's it, it's great because um, it took a concept, I guess, that people had kind of tossed around in the holochain ecosystem for quite a long time uh, from, from kind of just talk to action, like, okay, how would we actually do this, which was basically the concept that a single application might um, not just employ one DNA or, or two DNAs, but that it would, uh, it would, that you would create a different DHT per things that needed to remain private and separate from one another. And, uh, and so when we create a new project in, um, in Acorn, it's, it's actually doing that. Um, it's, uh, it's creating a unique DNA uh, each time that I that I go to create this project, so um, and that corresponds to this uh, to this secret, and the secret, uh, if someone knows the secret, then they can join uh, the project. They can join the DNA because the D, the the secret is the only thing that's unique to to this pr project as distinct from another one. So, this is your. Uh, your key, if you will, that gives you that gives you access to um, to another DNA. So, so technically, like you're still using. And if I created another one, um, yeah, obviously it's going to give us a new secret. But the thing kind of to note about once that um, once this comes up, right, is that each of these is their own DNA, um, and that means that they're completely uh, private from one another. There's no chance of uh, data uh, that someone's not supposed to be able to access being being accessed by others on the application. So, um, and it does that by cloning a sort of a template DNA, which is for a project, and giving it a simple, unique identifier, a sort of UUID, which is which is related to the project secret. So, if I were someone else. I could just paste in a, I could paste in a project secret, which is a five rememberable words, um, and join and and join the project. And that was an interesting process too. How do you make it so that um, uh, someone can discover whether this is a real existing project that they've been invited to or not in a decentralized space? <laughs> um, so. Yeah, so just that part was um, uh, an interesting process. And then uh, you launch a project, and this is where you're into the tree. And so you start it with a, with a clean slate. And um, uh, we talked about kind of the idea of a really, uh, let's say, uh, high-level goal. Um, I'm thinking of 300 down, we're back down to 300, and 300 million, what is it, 300 parts per million CO2 in the atmosphere. Um, and, uh, this is the state of affairs that I want uh, to, be, to be true in the world. And um, Uh, if we broke it down into, uh, so this is kind of we're creating a child of this uh, of this high level one, and um, I'm in Canada. Let's say that uh, Canada tar sands don't run anymore, or don't uh, uh, produce anymore. Maybe, um, and maybe Canada has Canada fully runs on electric cars. Um, so these are some of the things that I'm breaking this down, and um, uh, I could go further and further with that kind of process. Um, you also have a recent feature that we were working on and released is um, more kind of like tree editing. So, so that you can not just build the tree out this way, but that if you, um, because we found that 
you know, sometimes, I don't know, you're just like on the fly, you don't know exactly where this goes. Um, and so you're creating ones that are disconnected from the tree. And if you want to do this later editing, we developed this, uh, we designed and developed this system that lets you um, kind of drop a new node onto the tree somewhere else in the tree. And so this forms a connection and adds this node into the, to the tree and we can select an edge and delete it too and um, reorganize the tree this way. And these trees can get really big, but I want to show you, so that it can be a very kind of big uh, flushed out tree. I want to show you some of the other parts of the editor. So this is quick, quick editing um, here. And there's different things, um, metadata that we can associate with what we call, generally speaking, goals or outcomes. And uh, goals have statuses as uncertain, incomplete, in process, in review, or complete. And uh, the, the colors to go with them. And one of the key ideas is that the idea of the uncertain, uh, because if you haven't figured out how much work this thing is going to be yet, and then you leave it as uncertain. If you have estimated how much work this is going to be, and you've got it broken down into all the sub work, then you can just say this is incomplete. Um, and this is, yeah, this is incomplete too, and this is incomplete. And uh, eventually the relationships between these things are gonna be, be automated instead of all manual. So if certain things underneath this one, this goal are incomplete, then this one should obviously be incomplete too. But we haven't wired up all of that um, sort of propagation of those things yet. And uh, there's also the concept of the hierarchy I was mentioning about, is this, would you call this a root goal? Uh, we call root, trunk, branch, or leaf. Um, my favorite are leaves because they show up with a little leaf icon here and the, the thing. And when you turn it, when you turn them all green, it's actually really nice because especially if you've got the leaves and um, turn this into a green, uh, a green leaf on the tree. So here you see when the, when the tree goes green, that's kind of your, uh, and then this one should be green if those ones are green too. So now I'm kind of introducing the, the kind of methodology around it. Um, and uh, there's some other important concepts built in here, the one of um, priority. So the idea is that the, the app should help you know, um, know what to work on. And um, we approach this by uh, providing a voting system for how um, how urgent, important, uh, impactful, and, and effortful this particular goal is. And um, when I weigh in on this topic, I can say this is very urgent, not so important. I think it's going to be a uh, really high impact for not very much effort. And then I save my vote. And because it's only my vote, um, this should, let's see. Oh, I didn't save. Oh, okay, let's set this back again. Oh, there it goes. This is so the, the aggregated priority is is actually the averages of the votes uh, on the different on the different metrics, um, and these things play into a whole other view that exists, which is a completely different look at Acorn. And this is uh, what we call the priority framework uh, view, which gives you different perspectives on um, what's urgent and what's important, and um, I think to see the one that I voted on, we'd have to be looking at this particular one in order to see underneath it, uh, what's urgent and important within this goal. So this one has been voted on 
and it's in less urgent and more important when I look in this framework, and it's in um, more impact and less in uh, less effort in this framework when I look through this lens. So, um, so yeah, so we're really playing with kind of, and these things sort automatically too. So if we had a couple different things and we weighed in. This won't work. Yeah, there it is. I thought we did. Oh. There we go. Oh, there's there it is. I don't know why I wasn't seeing it. So here we have like two of them showing up, one in more impact and less effort, one in less impact and more effort. So if I was someone who was working on this, who was working with ACORN, I would obviously, uh, I would probably want to start with the goal that was more impact and less effort um, naturally. And so uh, this is part of the app that we don't have yet, but people can say, oh, well, we sort of, we have part of it. Uh, built so far, but the idea would be that, okay, so I'm going to assign myself Canada fully runs on electric cars. Now, these are bad examples because they're too, they're too high level and abs they're too uh, high up, but um, but I would add myself to uh, to this particular one and I would be sort of like assigned or a member of this particular one. So through that, we would be tracking who's who's working on what, and that's an important thing when we're looking at the tree, seeing who's who's working on what parts of the uh, on what parts of the tree. So um, there could be more that I could show you. There's exports, uh, there's data exports, and there's editing your profile and. Um, uh, we're also pretty happy to develop this um, concept of being able to have flexibility of using your using a trackpad or using a mouse, um, still having the navigation and stuff like that work smoothly on the different uh, the different devices. But yeah, that's a quick tour. What uh, anything um, coming to mind, David? Or no, it looks very. It's very beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of like, it's almost like you need a whole bunch of stuff um, ready-made to kind of elaborate in a tree, but it's pretty fun when you see it get big, like when you see how it really breaks down, um, when there's just like lots of things um, going on underneath or a, a deep, a deeper hierarchy um, too. And uh Yeah, so there's there's other stuff we can do too to kind of smooth out. Um, like for example, we'd like to add animations from one state to the next state when it reorganizes the tree, so that you can easily keep track of things. Um, there's still a long there's still a long backlog of like things to things to build and things to do, but it's it's certainly to a point where we we think you could you could pretty much. Um, you could pretty much use it as is, you know, as a, in, a, in a simple way. Uh, you could start using it and do uh, kind of like one of the goals is to dog food, right? Which is to probably want to use it to build, we want to use Acorn to build Acorn. And so we kind of see that point. Um, it's not not maybe too far off on the horizon. There's also this view. I didn't show this view. It's um, It's called the expanded view and it gives you more data like a time frame. Um, and there's also a description that you can have for the task, just basic stuff that you would obviously want to be associated with it, with a goal. And then, um, and then you can also have a, 
uh, a history, which is, I think is really useful, a history of this goal. And that's another thing that complements well with Holochain because of course, anytime that you update something in Holochain, it's just added to your ledger. Um, and so you're just pulling from the ledger to get the history, um, like of a goal, for example. Um, and there's, uh, you can also have comments, um, comments on things uh, and have a comment thread. Yeah, you saw, you, you saw all these different, uh, all these different ones. Um, yeah, we're really trying to pay attention to the details. There's little animations that you see. Uh, we worked on a lot on, on the animations. This kind of pops up. Um, other things like, oh, I didn't show you the multi-editor. So if you, um, this, this is a way that you can edit many cards at once because that can be really inefficient or, or tedious to edit sing cards uh, individually. So I could, um, I could convert multiple cards back to uh, uncertain if I select them. And there's these multi-select features and stuff like this. Including um, including this like a box select, um, and uh, yeah. So I mean, we're just like we're at this point where it would be really excited to exciting to put it in people's hands. Um, but unfortunately, we can't guarantee yet. Like basically, data because this is still running on Hall Chain Redux, we can't necessarily guarantee people data consistency or data. Um, you know, much many assurances in terms of if they were want to want to use this in in production, because um, mm. there were still some some flaws, you know, some inconsistencies. We would notice, we would use it, and what you would see, my tree looks different than your tree. You know, how are we going to stay on the same page if <laughs> I don't? <laughs> I'm not seeing that goal that you just created, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so so we haven't. We've been able to do a little bit of like user testing where you just kind of give it to people, put it in their hands and see how they work with it. Um, but we haven't been able to go to the, to the point with it where you say to people, um, please adopt it, please, um, please put your, your, your real world data and project management into here because um, we just didn't want to take on or, or present people with that those types of risks or be liable or something, you know, for, for whatever might happen. Um, and uh, so that's where we, where we hope to be going with it though, is to have, to have that level of assurance in the product that you could say to people, um, jump on board and start using this day to day. That's like, that's our goal. Cool. Um, could we could we look at the holochain side a little bit? Uh huh. Um, so how holochain fits into this is um, uh, we had to package the holochain binary in with this electron application. So so uh, so for example, um, uh. Most people don't know about this, but apps kind of they you can click show package contents and you can drill into what's actually inside that kind of nicely hide all of that away. But uh, but you can drill down in there and um, show you this view so that if you drill into what's actually inside of Acorn, because where did it? Yeah, it's there. So we're drilling down into Acorn and then you go into um, app here we go um, so two of the binaries that holochain builds hc and holochain are bundled in with this and there's a bunch of tricks that we did um, to make it so that the user never you know has to touch holochain or think about holochain and um, uh, some of those uh, have a little bit of room for improvement in terms of like security options for, for in the future. Let's say that you're just like, okay, we want to push this into production. We want we want all the maximum security options out of this too. We would probably um, 
we would change the design of, of, of it to introduce a step where you would write a password. Um, you would, in the, in the UI, you would write a password into the uh, app when you launch and the password would, uh, would secure your private key app while it's being generated. Right now, what we do is we use a flag that's built into Holochain called um, null pass, which is just, it's a null, it, it nullifies the password or sets a default password that it knows to or something like that to unlock the private keys. So it's an, in, it's an insecure but smooth um, system and you wouldn't use it in production, but it's been good for what it, for, for the purposes of uh, testing so far. So when you launch, um, uh, when you launch, what we do is we check, well, I can show that even from here, this is something we did recently is we, um, we added a couple of quick links uh, back into the folders where things are actually stored. And um, for example, your personal data that the Holochain is writing to your file system is actually here in this config folder that I just opened from the application. So we're tr you kind of connect back. You see these two. These are my two uh, project instances. Uh, these are the DNA. These are the source chains, and the and the um, for for those two projects. Uh, that I created. So this is the storage, the file system storage. It's also the where the key gets the private key gets written. It's not just the private key. It's kind of it's the whole it's the key format that Holochain uses. We you can call it anything. We just call it key store dot key. Um, and it's also the uh, the conductor config, which is obviously what the Holochain conductor runs itself based off of. And um, this file, this file stores all the configuration and it gets updated automatically when, when you add new project, uh, when you add new project instances and stuff like that. It was interesting combining, you, we have this one global DNA, which is the profiles DNA. So technically like you and me, David, if, if you were to run Acorn, we would already be able to know one another, even if we didn't join one of the same projects, because we're in a sort of a global DHT that's purely for user profiles. So I could find you in the directory and say, uh, or something if I if I um, tried or if we enabled that kind of feature, because we left the profiles DNA as a kind of global um, global one, and we only made the projects DNA the um, the, the the private one. And those are some of the key, those are kind of the key parts. Um, because this is an actual DNA file with all the, the WebAssembly code in it. Um, I think it's the WebAssembly code for like projects, uh, for, a, for the project's DNA. And um, what we did when you launch the application, I'll kind of show you how this works like, because. Uh, if I quit and then I reopen it, obviously I want it to remember uh, my identity and to have saved all of my stuff. So all of the stuff is saved into this folder, this Acorn folder. And when I launch it again, um, when I launch it again, you notice, okay, of course I don't have to sign up again this time because I signed up the first time how it knows that is that uh, it looks in this directory to see if these files exist. And if they, they do exist, then it just launches and loads those files. If they don't exist, then it has to generate these things. So it generates your private key the very first time that you launch the application. So if we go back or if I delete everything in here and I with the application. When I launch it again, um, it'll take me back to the sign up and we'll see how it um, goes back to sign up. And uh, 
there, it's already generated a new private key for me. That's what it does when it launches for the first time is it generates a config and, a, and the private key and um, stuff like that. And that's stuff that's managed in the Electron application. So, um, and it's not that much code that sort of controls Holochain, if you will, that sort of manages Holochain instead of the user having to manage Holochain. It's, um, it's mostly in a single file uh that's only i mean it's only 300 lines of code long and not all of that is uh is the code that's managing holochain but a bunch of it is for example um uh here we see exactly what i was just talking about if the config and keys exist uh if they don't create so if they if the keys if the keys exist uh, it just uh, it just checks uh, where it expects them to exist. Then it just starts the conductor. And if not, we say could not find existing public key. Now creating one and running setup. That's when it does the key gen step when it generates your private key for you. And that's using the HC binary. And then uh, it reads your public address from from the key that it just generated. And then it sets up the conductor config uh, as another step, and then it starts the conductor. Uh, so this this is the this is the code that manages Holochain from the electron side, and it's not that it's not that much code. But from my perspective, uh, it's very impactful code because it means that. Um, we, it really required us to do something like this to optimize the experience, the end user experience, uh, and make it and make it really smooth. And uh, yeah, so it, it's just it, that's that's been a pattern that has worked well for us since we uh, since we kind of came up with it.